rebellious son, and then I received a call from New York, and um, the lady was actually surprised to receive uh, or to have a pastor um, online. She was actually taken back by it. She called and I said, thanks for calling the Unity Prayer Line. This is Pastor Scott. How may I help you? And she says, oh, I didn't know I was going to reach a pastor. And she was very um, touched that we had someone available for her. And um, I just want to say how powerful prayer is. I don't... What, Pastor? I received an um, interesting prayer request, and I was going to talk about simple prayers and how God answers all of our prayers and He knows even before we call or even ask, and He's waiting for us to make those requests known and make them happen. And um, actually, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm just in Jesus' name. Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right there. Right there. You guys know me, I have usually no trouble speaking or whatever, but I feel out there or somewhere in here, or there's something really hard and heavy in the spiritual realm happening right now. There's somebody that's actually struggling that, that is about to make a decision that could affect many people's lives. And, and hurt people around them, and they think that the decision that they're making is just for themselves. Keep going. Keep going. And it's it, it's not when we when we get into that place where we start thinking selfishly, and that the things that we do will not affect the people around us. That's where we get sidetracked, and we get like get tricked by the devil. And I want to say to whoever this is that is thinking about making this decision. And I believe it's an eternal decision, and I come against that in Jesus' name and ask, Lord, that you change their heart and that you move them away from those selfish thoughts and, and to think about their family and about the ones that they love and about the fact that you love them, Lord. So lift them up and bring them into your, your glory, into your happiness, and save that person's life. God, I know, I know, and I know, and I know that this person needs help. And I, I can feel I'm struggling right now. And I say to you, please do not do what you're thinking about doing. Turn to God. Get into a church. Get into a church and change. God can change this. Holy Spirit, we're going to pray for this person. I don't even know where they are. Church, as a whole, please join me in intercession right now. Because the Holy Spirit is around. We ask the Holy Spirit to be here, Father. So we intercede for this person. I know it's odd, people. I know it's odd that we're praying for someone we might not even know. But it is in the Holy Spirit's heart to stop them right now so the angels can come down and intercede and maybe take that gun down and put it on the floor and change their life, Father. So we intercede right now, God, and we just lift this person up, Lord, and we just come against any doubt, any any lack of faith in that spirit of depression. We break it in Jesus' name, the name above all names. God, please help them and help us, help the ones you will bring into this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 I surrender all. I surrender all. All to be my blessed Savior. I surrender.
This is not time to be cold for me. This is not time. I'm looking out. Some of you look like, yeah, let's go, let's do whatever. Some of you look so cold and so dead, I'd get rid of me somewhere else. Come on. I pray against that right now. And I pray against that to those that are facing that online. God does not want you to be a cold, dead, church-going, God-serving, God-loving person. He gave, He came that we would have joy and joy in our heart, joy in our mind. He gave us that king that we would have life more abundantly. I don't care what's going on in your life right now. It's just a matter of surrendering to God so that He can put things in order. And He can give you that joy back. Why don't you be honest right now? Somebody in here, raise your hand and just say, you know, I just don't have joy. Anybody? Be honest. Anybody? One? One? Kind of? Some fence riders. I want, I want you to do something. I want you to think for a second why you don't have, those online, why you don't have joy. It's not the fact that God came up short for you. It's not the fact that God doesn't love it. It's the fact that it gets so easy as this. It's like this right here, Jack. Sometimes you choose to put on Christ and sometimes you choose to take him. Yep. And when you put on Jesus and you begin to touch him like that lady touched the hem of the garden, there's going to be something that comes to you that will change everything about you. It will change how you walk, how you talk, how you live. It will change everything. But when you stop reaching and you stop trying and you start coming to God, and you start, stop looking for Him, then that joy leaves. When your priorities are somewhere else. When your mind is hard, and I know all about this, when your mind and your heart is somewhere else, it's on someone, or it's on something, and you get in the house of the Lord, and instead of being able to raise your hand and saying, I love you, you feel condemnation, because you've given your love to something else. We all know. You feel guilty for past things that you've done. You feel all of that comes in. You know, what's funny is when it doesn't come like that until you step in the house of the Lord. You know why it happens when you step in here? Because this is the refuge, the strength, the strong power of God that you walk in and life is changed and things are done. But when you walk in, that's when the enemy jumps on your shoulder and says, I don't care that the saints are rejoicing. I don't care that there's great testimony. This stuff is not for you. That's where you have to say, wait a second, yes it is. It is for me because God loves me enough. He loves me like I am. Yeah, He wants me to change. Yes, He wants me to be dead. Right now, I have a feeling that if you'll just put your mind off of everything else and you'll surrender. And I know I'm talking to some people right now. You've got your mind somewhere else than you should. You shouldn't give much enough. We only have a little bit of time that we come in here. And we separate this for the time of the Lord. No, it's not enough because you have to live for God more and more and more and more. Not because it's the law, but because it's the, but because of love. And when you come in here, you're thinking about everything from last night. You're thinking about things from last week. You're thinking about this and you're thinking about that. You just, what you do is you make that presence of God that wants to come to you hold back. Because He's not forceful. He's not going to come and slam Himself into you and say, you're going to feel me like it or not. But He's waiting for us to just say, I need you right now. I surrender, God. I surrender. I surrender right now to everything that, everything, my mind, my heart, my soul, my strength, everything. And if you feel distance right now, you should be worried. But not too worried. Mm-hmm. Because God just wants you to come right back. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. This is not the time to be asleep. This is not the time to be distracted. Our church is on the move right, right now. Thanks. If it's going to come and fight us, now is the time to come and fight yes. us. Because if there's no fight, that means you're not doing anything. Right. That's right. But when there comes fights and distractions and devils show up and this show up and kids are ornery and things are trying to distract you and families doing this and that, if the Bible says rejoice in that stuff because 
That's what comes against you when you're doing things right. When you're doing things wrong, Chuck, what really happens? He's got you. He's got you. He's got you. He got you. He don't have to fight you. But right now you're being fought right now. Right now you're being tested right now. Right now your your joy is being trying to take away. That's where you have to reach inside. The devil, you're not going to take my joy. You're not going to take it from me. Great is the Lord. Great is to be great. I may be down, but God will pick me up. He always picks me up. He always brings that joy back. He always gives me victory. Don't worry about them. Kids are going to rebel. Kids are going to act up. Let them freak out. I'd rather them freak out in the house of the Lord than freak out somewhere else. <laughs> Let them get out of Let them throw fits. That's normal. Children. It's just the way it is. I was an honorary kid too when I went to church. <laughs> that's, yeah. my, that's mom over there. One thing, I'm going to tell you something. The difference is, my mom, it didn't matter what I did, I couldn't stop the lady from worshiping Jesus. <laughs> that's right. He says, you know, my mom got an outdoor. It's like, you're on your own. Somebody else will pick you up. Because right now, my time is, is to get my time to the Lord. That's right. You're not, you, you are going to stop me. No devil in hell is going to stop me. This is my time to lift him up. And when my mom here, I come against, I find him in the spirit right now. Yes, yes. I speak against him in the name of Jesus. You have to leave. Amen. Because... Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Oh. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Come on, Rick. Man, you got it bad. Come on. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There you go. Start coming in and saying, I don't care. 
I'm going to find Jesus if he's in Korea. <laughs> he's there sometime. <clears throat> Look at you. Look at something. I know you're all cool. Entertain me, Pastor. Sing another song. Give me a beautiful voice. Give me air conditioning. Entertain me because I need entertainment. No, you don't. You need the presence of Jesus. <laughs> and this church, please don't take this long. This church, all of us, we need to be rebuked of laziness and lethargicness and whatever stopping us from going out here and getting every person that's hungry for Jesus and saying, come in, getting every person online and we need to talk to them and say, we can pray for you. We're not just going to pray for you, we're going to pray for you until you get you get back to us and say something's happening. Come on, folks, Keith Jason preach like this. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah. I feel like going for a minute. Do you mind? All right. Bring it. Let me just tell you something. Chris, you can sit down. Those of you in the back, you sit down. <laughs> yeah, you can, ma'am, you can sit down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Behind the wall. <laughs> let's, let's have a little bit of a good time, shall we? I know you're not looking at your phone. Who would do it? Who wouldn't do it? That's like a slap in the face, right? Unless they tell them to. We are the church. Somebody say we. We, we are Somebody the say we. 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 We are the church. Are the church. I got a word. Now, I don't know. This, 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 this may not excite me. Okay. But this excites me. This excites me. This, now, I'm going to say this right now. This is going to blow your mind. And I don't expect you to understand it. Not the time to fidget. I don't expect you to understand. I don't expect you to hoop and holler. But some of us will hoop and holler. I got a phone call from a guy who's prop. And you know how I feel about that stuff. I would rather just not. I'd rather just say, dude, before you talk, don't talk. <laughs> if you're about to prophesy, hold on. If you're about to say something, I don't really want to hear what you have to say. Because when somebody prophesies to you, you it, it has to. You, you, Either it's a false prophecy or it's, it's, it's going to come true, you know. And, and then you get in that antsy stage. Well, he said it. And you're waiting two years. Well, he said it. Yeah. And you're getting all of that. And you're wanting to see it so bad and wonderful. And all that. So he calls me up. And he's he's a prophet. And he's, he's told me many things. And he called me up on the phone. And he said, I want to tell you something. And I'm like, all right. And he said, I was praying. Now listen, this is this. Oh, gosh, this ought to send a wave just something in the church. He said, I was praying. I was praying. And he said, and I believe that the Lord spoke to me. No, he didn't say I believe. He said the Lord did speak to me. He has boldness. And he said, I believe the Lord spoke to me. And he said, the church, churches in America is in trouble. Yep. He said, the churches in America are in trouble. Now wait, hold on, listen. He said, they turned away from God. They don't worship God like they used to. Oh, they have their nice buildings. Oh, they have their nice program. And they have people coming, 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 coming. They have all of this going on. And he said, but their hearts and their praise and everything, it sounds beautiful. It looks right. It looks where you're supposed to go. But the Lord told me that the churches of America are in trouble. And he told me, and I'm, I'm saying there's, yeah, I'm like, okay. Hope this is one of those false prophecies right now. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in there. Uh, we, we counted that. We may not be very many, but you know, we're only like a thousand. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but, uh, I'm like, we're in this. Mom, we're in this. We're in this. He's talking about us. Don't talk about yourself. And he said, they're in trouble because they turned away from God. And God's about to do something not good, by the way, to shake them up. Shake up pastors. Shake up churches. And I said, okay, well, all right, well, uh, I'm going to start looking outside. I'm going to go outside. Something's going to fall on me or something. All these kind of different things. Are you listening? Yes. And I, I it sounded it sound to me like doom and gloom. It really did. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't mind being honest with you, transparent with you. When I look at churches... Sometimes I do get caught up in the silence. I walked Scott, Scott, uh, 
invited me to the rock, and now I just want to beat him up. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm totally kidding. But I walk in, and for the first few minutes of walking in, it was like, oh, 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 oh. I felt so disgusted. Not because I wasn't on fire for God, but I was like, I was envy. I was jealous. I was, I, want, I was like, I want that. What would that be like to have all of that stuff? Yep. To have everything about everything. And I said, you know what? I want that. And I know some of you, you go to your churches and you got these different people and everybody's got a past and everybody's got something in their life that they don't listen to. But everybody's got somebody. Like that. So um, everybody's got somebody that, that, that they're, you know, and, and they walk into this church and they look around and say, well, not the rock. <laughs> it's not this one and it's not what I'm used to and it's not that one and it's not that one. We compare ourselves by ourselves. Yep. Churches, a lot of times, we think that because there's a large amount of people and they have everything, we think that that is, um, is the best. We think that's where God is. So, you know what I did? Thanks to you, and pretty much. You, you, got, you, you caused me to study. Okay. So, I went home that night, guys. I went home that night. Where's my brother, Tracy? There he is. I went home that night, God. Listen, listen, listen. Because what I'm about to tell you is going to change this church if you let it. Are you ready? All right. I went home that night and I started typing, what is the biggest churches in the world? I started just going at it. And you know that guy that went to Korea and hands down, that's, that's millions and millions. No one can touch that. But they can't even house all those people in one building. Churches all over the place. It's, like, it's, a, it's a crazy amount of people. It's millions. Which one is it? You know the name? Uh, Cho. Cho, whatever. Cho or whatever you But then guess what I did? I said, I want to know who is the number one church? Christian, Catholic, Protestant. Guess what I found out? Between the Christian church and the Catholic church, they combined as one. Can you believe that? Wow. Because they say that we're similar beliefs, they combined us as one. And they said that they had 2.5 billion to share. The Muslim church was 1.8 billion. So if you're somewhat good at math, you realize real quick that if you take 50% off of 2.5 billion, you don't have one acre, you have less. Which should tell you, we're not, as the Christian church is as big as they are, the number one biggest religion. It's the Muslim church. So then, I start to get excited. Well, I started getting excited. You know why I got excited? Because they don't believe like I believe. They don't have what we have. And I don't mean to offend anybody, but if you don't believe in Jesus, you're way off the mark already. The Bible says, I don't care, I don't care. The Bible says in the Old Testament it was about Jesus. The Bible says in the New Testament it's about Jesus. If you have not the Son, you don't have the Father. So you can go and cry off all you want. But if you don't Include the Son in part of that. You don't have it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So then I started to get excited. You know why I got excited? Because it's not about numbers. Yep. <laughs> and so, this is what, this, now back to what I was going to say. So, yeah, the American church is doomed. Yeah, they're going down. God's about to shake them up. This and that. I said, well, you, you know, I'm thinking... Did you, you really shut up now? Because I want to hear some good news. Yeah. Huh, let me hear some good news. He said, fuck you! Whoa. Wait, did you catch up? What? <laughs> Do you know how many people in this church? Come on! <laughs> he said, fuck you! What? <laughs> what we do? What about us? I was waiting, guys. I was waiting for, like, worse. 
church in Anaheim has found grace in the sight of the Lord. I, I, I lie not, I lie not, I know, I know you guys, sometimes it's hard, it's hard, because we go by sight. God has told us not to go by sight. He says in his word, don't go by what you see, go by what you feel, go by what's real. And I was talking to Scott the other day, and I said, I know you go to this other church sometimes, and they're a lot bigger than us, but what about the Spirit? And you know what he said to me? He said, they don't even come close to what we have in here. And so I started thinking about that. Thank you, Lord. We may not have it all yet. Did you hear me? We may not have it all yet. But we are on our way. We are on our way. We are on our way because we are faithful and we are little. He said you the must. We are on our way. You know what I'm saying? Run around the church. I can't be tense. Chunk, shout. And if I was somebody in this church or listening online, I would start right now and say, not because of me, not because of us, but attach yourself to a church that's going somewhere. Did I just invite you to attach yourself to this church? Yes, I do. You know why? Are you looking? Are you looking? Are you looking? You with me? Uh, why did I say that? Because this is the greatest church in the world. Can you say that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because there's no other church I would rather be. If Sunday at 11 o'clock, I'm not looking and saying, where can I go to church? I look to go to your church in Anaheim, whether it's online or it's right here. I look to come here. Because this is church family, my internet family. Some of you guys, we talk. Well, there's people on the internet that love to talk. <laughs> I made a mistake one time, guys. I said, I'm a pastor and I'm not getting any phone calls. <laughs> I must not be a good pastor because I'm not getting any phone calls. <laughs> people are not count calling counseling. Now they call all the time. <laughs> you literally have to shut your notifications off because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, but listen, it's not people that call up and say, listen, I just want to know what's, uh, what's the weather like over there. No, it's not that. They say, I got a dilemma, and I heard that you guys know how to pray. Somebody said that you guys know how to pray. Can you pray for me? And this man will testify. Miracles are signs and wonders are happening. Way over there, way over there. And way over there because we believe that God still does miracles. So far down, you're far down because you want to be far down. Right. Jesus knows how to pick you up. Yes, Jesus knows how to turn things around. Jesus knows how to put you on a bed and make you sick so you'll get your mind straight. Oh, are you threatening me? Yes, just did. Thank you. Who the Lord loves, He disciplines. Yes, he, he goes after. He goes after. Who the Lord loves. He said, I, I, I won't let you mess up. I won't let you. I'll let you go so far and then I'm going to come back and get you. And I'll do whatever it takes to get your attention. I, and anybody ever been there? Anybody with me right now? Oh, You've yeah. Been there? God yeah. has to send something your way to get your attention. Do you want that? Yeah. You want God to send something your way? I got, a, I got an idea. The Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Stand to your feet and get, get it done right now. I believe in Jesus Christ. You're the Lord of my life. You're the Lord of the church. You're the Lord of everything. Hallelujah. Woo. But try doing this. You're the Lord of me. How about that? Say it. Are you bold enough to say it? You bold enough to say it? Say it. You're the Lord of me. You're the Lord of me. Come on. Watch this. You don't like something about me, Father. Don't leave it like it is. Change me. You know what the problem is? 
I'm told that I'm stubborn. <laughs> I've heard that I'm stubborn. But I'll tell you what, you, some of you got me beat. Yeah. <laughs> some of you got me beat. We can have the word, the, 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 the happiest day in the Lord. You're not moving me. So some of you are in there. I gotta get out. He's about to pray. He's about to preach me out of my stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to preach me out. I, before I know it, I'm gonna get excited about Jesus. I'm stubborn. He's not gonna preach me out of nothing. <laughs> That's how some of you are right now. Yeah. Preach me out of my sin. Yeah, right, try it. I'm not gonna preach you out of nothing. We're gonna preach the word of God, and the Lord's gonna come in and say, I'll move you to me or I'll move you out. He's changing us. Yes, he is. Because he's getting ready to come. Please. I know that I'm kind of hyper today, <laughs> serious today. I'm not grouchy. Everybody look at me. Nothing wrong in my life right now. Everything. If I die right now, I went to heaven, it'd be great. Because everything is just a little too smooth right now. <laughs> if that would. So don't look at my serious face and think, oh, he's having a bad situation here. Everything is beautiful. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I just came in here today. I feel a little bit serious, I know. A little joke. Don't worry, I'll joke a little bit. Because I feel that old fashioned anointing. <laughs> Upside down. And, 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 and 
and we talk to him. And, and, and every day, almost every day, there's a call that says, pray for me, Pastor Scott. Pray for me, Pastor Anthony. Pray for me, Unity Church. I want to come. I want to come. And I thought, you know what? That's what God's doing. He's getting the lazy out, the lethargic out, the ones that don't want to do anything. And he's going to go like this. We've seen it before at, at South Coast. They're not watching. But we've seen it before where they just brought him in from different places around the world just because they were hungry. And they wanted to get involved with a church that was trying to go somewhere and do something for God. So God is going to line us up with those type of people that are so hungry. They want to do the will of God no matter what. Are they perfect? No. Do they have sin? Yes. Do they have these wrong? Yes. All of that. But who's going to come in? They're going to give glory to God like you. Woo! I'm sorry, guys, in the world. I have no notes. Ask the Holy Ghost uh, to go up, man. I feel like our rage I go through this place. Good one. I got a secret for you. Are you ready for this? This guy used to be a punk rock. <laughs> can you see it? I can see it. <laughs> I can see that. I see the hair. Did you have that? I had mohawks, two, three of them. Hey, I. I, At the same I, I, time? Yes. Oh gosh, I could tell you a story about myself, but it would probably kill this whole man. Oh, <laughs> oh, anyway, now I know how those punk rockers are. They're irritating. <laughs> <laughs> they always have to make spectacle. They want their hair to be as high as it can in spite. But they don't want you commenting about it. <laughs> because the minute you say, dude, we're talking to hair, they're going to want to fight you. And oh, the littlest of ones will try to fight you. They've got little rages inside. How do you guys pass that on anyway? They're all just a bunch of little rangers. Or big ones. Yeah. And they, get, they have those parties. And they're Parties don't even make sense. They're the most non following the beat people you've ever seen. That's all they want to do is that. That's all they want to do is go to that for hours. And they want to do that thing where they slam you, man. They go like that at a party and they slam you. And you're supposed to like it. <laughs> First time I was ever invited to one of those, and that was the last time I was ever invited to one of those. I just came in, and man, they were just. They were doing all that stuff, and I was going, What is going on? And I, you know, I got caught looking and staring and watching. And all of a sudden, this guy is going in the <laughs> Yeah. And I said, what well, this dude's about to do? Boom! <laughs> and down I went. <laughs> ready to fight. I'm, ready, I'm up, man. I'm ready to go. And it's like, well, dude, you don't fight. What's up? This is normal. What are you talking about? <laughs> he just slammed into me <laughs> and hurt me. At least my pride, anyway. Yep. Why am I saying all that? Because we got some awkward people coming into the house of the Lord. You want to hear something funny? I'm going to tell you something funny about my Anybody remember the Prince days? I mean, the real Prince days. Oh, jeez. I mean, when he used to have a clothing line. <laughs> Do you guys remember the Prince days? Purple rain. Do you guys remember that? Purple rain and all that. Can you remember those things? Everybody wanted to be like Prince. Oh, did I want to be like Prince, man. So one time I went in the store, and I saw the ruffled shirt. And I said, i got to get that ruffled shirt. And I bought that ruffled shirt, and I put on that ruffled shirt. And I combed my hair to the side, and I put the eyeliner on it. Dude, did I think that I had it going on? Woo! And I was walking around this club, and all of a sudden the guy that was in scene said, Prince is in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was the most degrading, humiliating way ever. <laughs> we got some weirdos that come to Jesus. That's right. We got some 
unlikely people that come in. We got some pot smoking, drug dealing, pimping, prostitute. People walk naked in the streets if they could. They do it now if they could. People, it's just society just uh, ugh. But I remember the man in the Bible where society said, ugh. Yep. I remember a man in the Bible who was chained to some tombs, naked, and out of his mind. And they sent him out of the city and said, you don't come back in. And when Jesus found him, he put him in his right mind, and he put him in his right heart, yep. and he put him where they looked at him and said, only to God did this one get the glory. That's why we're in the church now, because we didn't fit in to we were weirdos out there that were trying to fit in, but we come to the church and God said, that's what I'm looking for. Give that stuff to me, and let me make you something. Amen. Amen. Good word. Join a part of us. I don't say this with pride. I don't. I don't say this with arrogance. But attach yourself to this church. This church is going somewhere. Right. It's going somewhere. It's going somewhere. We got faults. We have faults. Boy, do we have faults. We have things wrong. We need you. We need you. I need you. Is your name Tracy? If it's not, I'm going to change the name. We need Jesus. We need to surrender. I stopped praying the way I was praying. Got a house. My wife has a house in Texas. All these people are looking at it. All these, and it just doesn't set. I don't know why. Even the real estate agent says, no more problems. Price is right, everything's right, you should say. And I just kept saying, son of the house, God, bring it my body. But after a while, you just have to get to the place where you say, not nah, listen. Maybe he has a plan to rent it. Maybe he has plans that you don't we don't know. And I'm just giving you one scenario. What about the things in your life right now? Everybody? Really? What about your life? 